Welcome to Podcasting and Platforms. My name is Chris Spangle. Thank you so much for joining me and welcome to the show where we help new podcasters get started and old podcasters up their game. And uh, I'm not going to call my guest an old podcaster, but he's a seasoned podcaster. <laughs> he is the host of the Cancer and Comedy podcast where they heal through hope and humor. He's a, an all around great guy and he is starting a new podcast convention in Indianapolis where a lot of my listeners are. And I wanted to welcome Brad Miller. Brad, welcome to the show. Chris, awesome to be on the Chris Spangle Show, a dream of mine for the last week or so. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. So, you know, you are a seasoned podcaster. How long have you been podcasting? I started podcasting, Chris, in 2012. Uh, my uh, At that time, my uh, oldest son was a lacrosse player at Center Grove High School. And I'm kind of, you know, I had, uh, he'd played football, some other things where I'd done the PA announcer, that type of thing. And I have a little bit of a history in radio going all the way back to my college days, the campus radio station and various cities I'd lived in and done little, you know, commercials and some uh, uh, fill in stints at people. Always had my eye on radio, but then he was playing lacrosse and I said, you know, not this podcasting thing, I might give that a try to do this kind of a player coaches show. And so for, a couple of uh, his, like his junior and senior year when he was a captain of the team. That's what I did. I had some fun with a podcast uh, then and uh, in 2012 uh, and 13 and just had some fun doing that. And I always kind of want to be a sports guy a little bit. So that's what I did. That got me the bug. And since then, I've had, I think, about seven or eight shows that I've had over the last, uh, you know, 11 years, 11 or 12 years or so. And Definitely have the bug, love it, and I see and feel the power of podcasting and want to be a part of it moving forward and help others to get involved with it. What is it specifically that, uh, like, when you feel that power of it, can you articulate that? What What do you feel after all these years that might persuade somebody to get involved if they're sitting on the fence about starting a podcast? You know, Chris, there's almost nothing else that you can do if you have a message that motivates you or you have fun with that you can literally be in the ears and the heads of people who are, have a similar interest. What I mean by that is it's an intimate form of communication that people in many cases are listening to your voice in their earbuds. So you are that close to their brain, so to speak, and they are doing, they're listening to you, uh, wh whatever they're doing, working out, doing the dishes, whatever the, in the car, this, this type of thing, if you're with them anywhere. And I love that intimacy and that influence. And I see some power in it and the feedback I've got over the years from, from some people, uh, supports that both the people who've listened to my shows and, and talking with other podcasters who have the bug as well. They, they, they love how they can make a connection on a very intimate level, different than other forms, different than diff, diff, definitely different than broadcast radio, which was involved with before and other forms of communication. I love the intimacy of it. I think that's what I love, too. I think that it is, you know, the various shows from the Chris Spangle show to the Pat Down and then, you know, this show podcasting and platforms. It's starting to build a community. It's just getting its, its feet under itself. Um, you get to talk to people on a more intimate level. I was just having a, a conversation with a listener that she lives here in Indiana. We've never, we've only met a couple times in person, but we've become good friends, right? Mm -hmm. Because they were listeners. They get to know you. Uh, it, it is a bit of, and I don't know if you've had this, but it's a bit of a weird experience when you're out and you <laughs> run into a listener and you are their friend, but you don't know anything about that person. <laughs> I don't know if you've run into that, but that, it's just that intimacy that you can build. Yeah, with it's, it's, great. it's true and it's cool and it's uh, a little bit freaky. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but, but I love it. You know, I got to admit that I, that I love the fact to be kind of recognized for your voice and for the uh, impact of your message. Love that. So let's talk about the Cancer and Comedy podcast. Yes, uh, sir. Guessing it didn't have a great beginning, but has a hopeful end here. Tell us about the start of the Cancer and Comedy podcast and what you do there. Well, uh, I'm uh, pleased to say that uh, the Cancer and Comedy podcast, uh, as we record, as we record this episode, episode uh, number twelve will go up uh, tomorrow, and I'm happy about that. It's been going for 
a few weeks now. And uh, believe it or not, Chris, I just got word yesterday that I won an award for it already. Wow. Uh, from the Spark Media Conference, which is a Christian podcasting conference. And I submitted the first few episodes to their conference. And to my shock and surprise, I won in the uh, best uh, Christian comedy uh, podcast category. And so who, who knows what can happen when you put yourself out there? Well, that's exciting. Yeah, the Spark Media Conference. Uh, they've got a great conference, a great you know training for podcasters. love their group. So that's pretty cool that you won an award. What was the category? Category was Christian comedy, and I was shocked about it. I was originally supposed to go to the conference. I uh, couldn't go because of some personal matters here at home, and but uh, uh, they had a process to submit your podcast, and I had about a half dozen or so episodes done. I said, well, well why not? So I sent them in, and, and my buddy Dave Jackson, who was there, accepted on my behalf, and he sent me a text and said, hey, guess what? You won. So wow, that's cool. I, I, I love that, but I just wanted to share that what I'm doing here is definitely not about you know, a, a, uh, glass award, which is cool, but it's about impact. I can make and already have seen on uh, people who would deal with profound diseases of, like cancer and, uh, and other profound, uh, diseases. And I got motivated on that, uh, Chris, um, because of my own story that way. And if you allow me to, I'll just share briefly about my story, how I came about Please. doing this. As I mentioned before, I've been podcasting for several years, and for the last several years, six years, 275 episodes or, or so, I had a, a podcast called Beyond Adverse. It's still live uh, at drbradmiller.com. But I basically would interview and talk to people who've overcome some form of adversity. Uh, I call it the five Ds, uh, depression, divorce, uh, disease, debt, and death. And I interviewed people in various categories that way and how they got through it and how they succeed in life. And I had a spiritual element in that uh, podcast. I'm, I'm a retired pastor, so that's kind of what I do. I try to put a some sort of a spiritual element in everything that I'm about. Had a lot of fun with that. Talked to a lot of people in that podcast who dealt with diseases, like uh, including cancer. And then, uh, oh, in... August of 2022. I retired in July of 2022. In August of 2022, a blood test flagged me for cancer. And by uh, after a rigmarole of budget test in December, right after Christmas, uh, December 27th to be exact of 2022, I was diagnosed with prostate cancer. And my prognosis was not too good. The doc said, if you don't do anything, you got two or three years uh, left. And so I knew I had to do something. And uh, my motivation at that point was, uh, among other things, my two granddaughters, who were five and two at the time, and we spent some Christmas time with them and at a McDonald's on the north side of Indianapolis. Uh, I saw them, and they were having fun, eating their Happy Meals, and I said, you know, I really want to see these girls when they are not only five and two, but I would see them when they're 22 and 19 and whatever's going on in their life. It means I got to do something about it. And so I went through the process, you know, kind of, of what am I going to do about it? So there's the medical side of things. I ended up having surgery, and that was successful for the most part, and that was a good thing. But I thought, what am I going to do with my life now? And I decided, you know, I cannot just let this thing just happen to me. I've got to share not only my story, but I bet there's other stories out there. And one of the things that happened to me, Chris, I just kind of had the attitude of, you know, I kind of had my one of the first things I did, I kind of had to laugh to keep from crying. And I started thinking about that process there, about laughing to keep uh, from crying. And there is a, a, a biblical proverb that I ran across that uh, said, you know, a cheerful, a cheerful heart is good medicine, Proverbs 17, 22, but a dry, but a, but a sad heart dries up the bones. And I knew I didn't want to be dried up and I didn't want to have and a, the cheerful heart. So what can I do about that? In my case, I had just retired. I was looking for something to fill my time. And I said, okay, I'm going to try why can't I do a podcast about this? And I worked with some people who I work with to develop a, a name for it and ask some other people. And I, I was wanting to do this whole concept of a cheerful heart is good medicine. And I wanted to try to speak to people at, over the, uh, who deal with cancer and other profound diseases. Cause I'd worked with that my whole life as a, I'm a retired pastor for 43 years, dealt with many, many people with cancer and other bad situations. And I found that people, who dealt with it best, had a sense of humor, and they had hope and humor in their life. 
And so I said, okay, let's do a, let's do a podcast about this, about having hope and humor as a part of the healing process. And so uh, that's what we did. I found a co-host, a woman who, uh, who uh, ha- is a breast cancer uh, warrior. She likes to call herself. Her name is Deb out of Atlanta, Georgia. And she and I partner together. And so we do basically every week we have a, we, she and I get together and we talk to a, a guest who's had a story to tell. Then I often do a lot of solo episodes with my own teaching about hope and humor. And we throw some bad jokes in there and funny stories. I also do a, a kind of a, a, a theological uh, talk for just a little bit. I call it the faith it or break it segment. And uh, I also throw in some classic rock because I'm an old classic rock DJ and quotes from people I think are cool. And I put several things together and I enjoy doing it. And uh, so far, the response has been very positive from people. And I just look for it to be part of the mix to share with people to help them to bridge the gap, you know, from the grim of cancer to the grin of having some happiness in your life. So we like to call it the transition from grim to grin. And uh, we would like the Cancer Comedy Podcast to be part of it. And so it's kind of plays on the whole thought about in, uh, in Shakespearean uh, thinking, there is the mask, you know, with the tears running down. And there is also the mask with the big smile. So we use balloons with that type of thing, a balloon with a big frown on it for cancer and a balloon with a big smile on it for comedy. And we try to play in that area between those things. And so, so far, so good. We've uh, getting some traction out there and enjoying sharing it. And uh, that's what I'm all about right now, man. I'm putting my focus on this cancer and comedy podcast. So you're also starting a podcast convention here in Indiana. And Absolutely. that's how we got introduced. Our friend over at the Wish TV All Indiana Podcast Network, Alan, sent me a note and said, hey, are you going to this? And I said, I don't even know what that is. And so I checked out the website. I was impressed that it's affordable. And then I was impressed that Dave Jackson is speaking. For anybody that doesn't know who Dave Jackson is, why don't you tell us? And then how did this idea come together? Well, uh, the idea came together. Uh, well, first of all, I'll explain who Dave Jackson is and a little bit of my passion about podcasting. So a few years ago, I really decided I really wanted to get into podcasting even deeper. So I started reaching out to some of the kind of the, the pod fathers, as some people call them, some of the uh, people, well-established people in the podcasting world. And Dave Jackson, who's uh, based in Akron, Ohio, is one of those guys. He's a uh, been podcasting since 2005 and he has a number of podcasts one of the key ones is called the school of podcasting started listening to that school of podcasting podcast knew that this guy wanted to meet and so uh, i contacted him and we were able to uh, talk and get together and i became kind of a part of his uh, crew his coaching group that he has uh, put uh, put together, and he and I have then met at a couple of conferences that we have been to. He wrote the book called Profit from Your Podcast, Proven Strategies to Turn Listeners into a Livelihood, and he uh, is one of my mentors and teachers in podcasting, as there are others, and I just, I chose to reach out to a bunch of people and kind of learn what's working, what have you learned, because I knew I had to learn some stuff, and so he and I developed a relationship, and uh, and he uh, and I talked about it. Uh, I had an opportunity to have the church I attend uh, gave me uh, the full use of their building for a uh, comedy show that I'm doing to raise money for cancer on the evening of November 4th, uh, 2023, Saturday, November 4th. And that's called the, uh, the, the uh, Clean Comedy Cancer Benefit. And, uh, and people can find out more about that at cancerandcomedy.com slash event but i had that in the evening but i had all day long and i was talking to dave and dave was talking about the need for more regional and more uh, kind of smaller events uh, kind of in comparison to some of the giant podcasting conferences with a thousand or more people well, there well, let's pause there in the story okay okay because Thank i you. think this is an important point that people don't understand because i think it speaks to the growth of podcasting that you and i as old timers uh, going back to 2007 for me and then going to podcast movement in 2018 in Philadelphia was a uh, was a fun experience and it was kind of a small conference. 
going to podcast movement in Nashville in 2021 was a completely different experience. It was radio companies, Sony Music, Spotify, uh, client dinners. It was much more, it was actually much bigger than the NAB radio show that I had attended the year previous uh, and much more vibrant in a lot of ways, which I found interesting because it's, you know, radio is just so much bigger in terms of the industry size than podcasting is. But there's been a lot of changes. And, you know, going to Nashville kind of made me a little nostalgic for uh, the podcast movement of 2018, where it wasn't so corporate and it wasn't so let's have a panel talking to other industry insiders about industry insider stuff versus 2018, uh-huh. which was how do I, how do you monetize a podcast? How do you know if a downloads real, right? It was, it was a lot more um, bespoke. And I think this is a great idea to do these podcast conferences in local areas for local people because it builds community around it. You know, I've been doing the indie podcast mixer here in Indianapolis, and we've been getting about 50 people showing up to these little social events that we've been putting together. Um, and I think there's a real hunger for people just to get together and go, hey, I'm a I'm a not an industry podcast professional. I'm just a guy with a mic that enjoys talking to my friends or a gal doing a true crime podcast. And I've got 200 downloads. So I'm not Ashley Flowers yet. You know, I think so. I think it's a great idea. I mean you want to expound on that any like what have been some of your insights or maybe stuff that Dave is well I I share some of what you're sharing about there's two or three big podcasting conferences here in the states and there's several even overseas podcast movement which you mentioned is one of them I've been to it several times I was there in 2015 in Fort Worth in 2016 in Chicago when they were I don't know how many, five, 600 people there, a good, good sized number. And then I also went to the one you mentioned in Nashville. And I've also been to Pod Fest in Orlando on a few occasions. And there's Pod That's Expo. Mother, Pod Expo. I've not been to that one, uh, but these are big events with the, uh, but they have changed their nature, as you, you, you said. They have become quite corporate. And what Dave Jackson and I were talking about was a little bit of what you're talking about, just a little bit of nostalgia for uh, those podcast events which served the needs of the independent podcaster, which I consider myself an independent podcaster. The parlance we use in podcasting is indie, an indie podcaster. And so, you know, my podcast about, uh, uh, about adversity was just my take on helping overcome adversity. And I've had some church related podcasts and ones like that. I have a podcast for, for pastors called podcasting for pastors, which is where I try to teach pastors how to podcast. All those are my independent efforts. And I don't really have a desire at this time to be a part of a network or a conglomerate. And of course, unless they come write me a big check, <laughs> you never know. <laughs> in fact, I have a really good friend who was an independent podcaster for many years in the uh, faith-based space. And all of a sudden, when these big conglomerates came in and Write him a big check, and so away, away you go. But at any rate, the, having said that, Dave and I were talking about kind of this need for regional events, a little bit more smaller scale events. And there's a few of them around. He went to, uh, he was planning at the time we talked, was planning to go into a couple of such events on the East Coast in New Jersey, and then one, I think, in Arkansas. And uh, he shared about how those were really uh, good things to go to. So I thought I got this, got this space. I got it all day long. Can I pull off? And I've done some events in the past uh, in uh, concerts and youth events that I've done in my churches, statewide events. Uh, Can I pull this off? Especially focused. Here's the key, Chris, focused on indie podcasters. That's my focus here. Independent podcasters in indie, you know, is kind of my focus. That's what we call it. Podindie.com. So podcasting, indie, independent, and Indianapolis-based. Anybody can come, of course, but uh, that's what we're doing. It's focused on independent podcasters, kind of a regional event, and whether we have a dozen or 120 people or whatever it is, the place can hold 100 or so people, we're going to have this and have a good time. Because Dave uh, Jackson, uh, he and I were talking about, and I asked him, hey, Dave, if we do this, will you come? And he says, man, I'll be there. 
And so he's coming. I actually got some other speakers coming in. I'm talking to one of my speakers right now. Chris Spangle is going to be one of my one of my speakers as well. And I also got a fellow uh, a guy named Craig, a professor at the University of Louisiana Monroe, who's flying in wow. from Louisiana to. He's an expert on podcasting and AI, artificial intelligence. This is what he works on in the academic world at his university, and he's going to be sharing about that. Uh, at the conference as well. I just heard from him yesterday. So this, I want people to know, Chris, this isn't a half-baked effort. It's kind of contracted timeline-wise, but Dave Jackson is a Hall of Fame podcaster. He is recently spoken at, he speaks at every big podcasting event, including he's been, he was in England at the, what they call the podcast show. He was in Australia. He's been all over the States. He is all over the place speaking about podcasting. And w this is going to be a good thing. Yeah. I think for those of us who are long timers, like when you talk about podcasting, you know, and teaching people about podcasting, of course, there's the podcast answer man, um, Cliff Ravenscraft in the beginning. Right. And then, you know, right. Dave Jackson. And mm -hmm. um, the Audacity to podcast with, uh, please help me da with his name. Daniel um, Lewis. Daniel yeah. Lewis. Yeah. And then yeah. Um, Ray Ortega, yeah. I, I believe it is. John yeah. Lee Dumas. You got to throw him in there. Yeah, too. right. He, he Well, he he to me is like on a different line. I guess he, he did teach people about podcasting. Yeah, I'll give him his due. He, yeah. you know, he just took it to such a different level than everybody else where he's making like a hundred and. 90 grand a month <laughs> so yeah, well, he's def he's definitely corporate too now especially but yeah yeah no i mean you know he podcasts he works like one day a month and then i mean all credit to him and then yeah because he wrote a journal too that i actually bought personally from him in 2018 yeah that, that i thought that i actually kind of used in thinking through this brand and and you know kind of everything that oh yeah he, he's it, so. good he's excellent i i've met him personally i've interviewed him on my podcast and uh, his wife, Kate Erickson, I've uh, interviewed her as well. And I, you know, I, I have a great relationship uh, with John Lee Dumas. Just, uh, he's at a different level. And I'm. this is the focus of this event. My focus is on those people who are just starting off or just want to get a little training for people just ahead of them, this type of thing. And they just want to make an impact. You know, they want to get a little traction on their impact or get one started. They've right. heard about it. They know it works. Hey, everybody knows it works. You know, it's the topic right now, Chris, of like uh, all kinds of uh, other entities out there. You know, the YouTube, uh, many shows on YouTube call themselves a podcast, which is cool. But, uh, you know, uh, you, the TV show Murders in the Building. My wife and I love to watch <laughs> yeah. that. It's all about a podcast, really, right. you know, uh, with Steve Martin and uh, Martin Short and those, those guys. There's lots. Of, it, everybody knows it works, but not everybody knows how to do it. Yeah. If you come to podindy.com, you're going to get a step-by-step -step process that Dave lays out and you're going to lay out and I'm going to be talking and, uh, and, and Craig, uh, my friend from Louisiana is going to be talking about AI about, but particularly it's going to be how to plan to start, to launch, to grow and to monetize your podcast if you want to. All right. Well, Brad Miller, thanks so much. Give one more plug. Where can people sign up and get tickets, which are very, very cheap and cheaper well, now than they will be. In the let's just be clear on the, all the details here. The details are the date is November, Saturday, November 4th, 2023. The time frame is 12 noon to 5 p.m. So it's just one afternoon. You don't have to worry about meals or anything like that. We're going to have some snacks there for you and, the, and the, this kind of thing. But it's going to be an intensive five hours. Uh, it's in Whiteland, Indiana. It's at a church called the Heaven Earth Church, and that is right across the street from the Whiteland Community High School. It, it, it's near the intersection of, of US 31 and Main Street in Whiteland. So it's in the Indianapolis metropolitan area. The website is podindy.com, P O D I N D Y.com. Tickets are $27. But the good news is we've got group rates. And we even got student rates for like college and high school students uh, if they want to check that out. Uh, but uh, we'd love to have people come. If you go to that website, you can uh, find out more about it, podindy.com, and you can be in contact with me personally. I will pick up the phone if you call me. I will answer the email if you email me because we want this to be a, a great event. And we're looking forward to having Chris Spangle and all your listeners uh, 
checking it out. Chris is going to be one of our speakers. All right, Brad Miller, thanks so much. I appreciate your time. Thanks so much, Chris. Appreciate you. And thank you for joining us here on Podcasting and Platforms. We greatly appreciate it. If you enjoyed this program, if you learned something, if you want to help spread the word about the convention, then please, the best way you can support Brad, the best way you can support your favorite podcast is to share it with your friends. So do that right now. Go to social media and share the episode. And make sure you check out our website, Podcasting and Platforms, and see all of the goodies there, like the toolbox, how to get started, our PDF the 18 questions you have to ask before you start a podcast. So, all right. Thanks so much for joining us here on podcasting and platforms.